I, sorry, I got a little behind, but I finished our divided kingdom. So we can do it in two videos. So we're going to do it together right now. Okay, so we are here. We're not going to finish the whole divided kingdom. We are going to finish One Kings, the book of One Kings. I apologize. So um, we're now in the seventh period. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The divided kingdom, as you can see, uh, we did. We're doing Kings twelve through twenty-two. Probably half of that in this video, and then I will do the next one immediately after. Um, there are no covenants in this one, as you can see. This is where the covenants are. Those are the supplemental books that I'll read after our thirty days, um, and then. Um, and Jonah is sent to Syria. We don't know him yet, but we're about to meet him, I guess. And um, let's see. Yeah, Jonah to Assyria. Um, and that will be in the next. And I think that will be in Kings 2 because that did not come up in Kings 1. So um, Jezebel leads uh, Israel astray and Elijah defeats the prophets of Baal uh, which is good and there's a lot going on here with a lot of different characters as you can see all these characters lots of action going on and then um, as you can see the kingdom divides the northern kingdom the ten tribes the capital is Samaria the southern Judah, two tribes, the capital is Jerusalem. The world power, as you can see, changed from Egypt to Assyria. And here is some interesting stuff. Um, so with, with that change, though, I just want to say it's a big energy or ideology shift. So, um, And if you look here in our secular history, see, secular, the world power, secular history, um, it says toward the second half of this period in secular history is interesting. The first Olympic Games begin 1776 BC, and this period is 1930 to 1722. Um, and so we got the Olympic, Olympic, um, that starts and the founding of Rome 1753 and this one more interesting to me I don't know about others but the Homer's Iliad and I don't I don't know if I'm saying that correctly an odyssey now it looked familiar but I didn't know exactly what it was it's 750 to 700 BC which I so I looked it up real quick um, there, it's the two of Greek's most famous ancient poems that have inspired many works of literature, art, music, and film. And I just learned that. So that's very exciting to me because I'm a poet myself. I love poetry. I love writing it and learning about it, but I've never really had the time to spend with it. So this could be a little jumping off point since apparently it's very famous and inspiring. And that's what I love about Jeff Caven's great adventure because the bio his bible because this wouldn't normally be found in a bible um i don't think um but he puts a little bit of the secular world into the timeline uh which gives it some perspective and i love it okay back to the divided kingdoms it's very dramatic and dark so um this is the summary the seventh period begins 19 or 9 30 BC with the division of the kingdom under Solomon son Rehoboam and concludes with the fall of the northern kingdom of Israel in 722 after the golden age of David and Solomon. Instability, idolatry, and injustice mark this period. Although a bright spot is the ministry of the prophets Elijah and Elisha, both men 
I know it sounds like a woman's name, the Elisha, but it's a, it's a man. Now, this sounds like it's got, this is interesting. Sadly, um, darkness is always interesting, right? Um, it's one of the ways Satan pulls us in, isn't it? Or maybe it's just because goodness shines brighter in the darkness. Or maybe it's a mixture of bittersweet memories, something like that. And that is why God sent the Lord to be the light of the world, because darkness is so alluring to human nature. So, the narrative. Um, here in the narrative, toward the end of Solomon's reign, things start to trend downhill rapidly. Solomon defies the three basic, the three specific prohibitions. They must not use their royal power to amass wealth or they must not use their royal power to amass one, horses for war, two, wives, or three, wealth. Okay, so let's go to our next page. And maybe that's being greedy. Maybe it's about being greedy. I don't know. Uh, not that being rich is evil in itself. After all, God told Solomon he was pleased that he asked for wisdom. So he said, I'm going to give you riches. So it's obviously it's not about money. That's just the currency and how much we have, obviously. It's how we handle it and all, but it's too complex to get into. But this kind of reminds me of the prosperity preaching we hear so often coming from our Christian brothers and sisters. Because um, you're getting lots of stuff, uh, does it mean God's blessing you? Or could it be Satan alluring you away from God? Or could it be both? Yeah. That's why prosperity preaching makes me a little nervous. N not just the sin aspect of it but because through our suffering can come our most valuable gifts and at least it has for me so um if you notice most of our important life lessons come through pain whether it's emotional physical but i will admit i'm praying for a pain-free death but of course i don't want to miss the sacrament so there's that so okay so here we go solomon Former wives become a negative influence as they turn his heart away from the Lord and he builds numerous temples for their pagan gods. The lure of Satan, right? Whether he took those wives for sexual pressure or just to join power with other royal families, either way, for greed. Um, it was forbidden by God specifically. So either, either greed or to align powers still god said no so it seems we're going to see the seeds of greed blossom into cruelty here um from the start of this dark period so that little area there um so there's a divide between the north kingdom and the south kingdom along with the small tribe of benjamin and the priestly tribe of levi so even though there's two, there's those two kind of on the side that both of them um, maybe use at some point, or at least one of them. So, two calves of gold. That's Rehoboam. Um, and then, so the two calves of gold, basically Rehoboam, um, first acts as king yeah because he's divided um he does that one of his first acts is to build two calves of gold to keep his people out of the other part you know the southern part so greed and division his reasons are both political and religious um only the davidic dynasty though is sanctioned by god so um no less than nine different dynasty families arise to the throne of the Northern Kingdom during its two centuries of existence, a sign of its sinfulness. Okay, so then Jeff Cavins basically, you know, this all talks about some different parts of it. And then he gives the significance of it. Um, sin and exile. 
So that's all very good, but I don't have time for all of it. I'm just going to highlight this. It's a lot of fighting in this. Um, so God sends a little bit of light during the moral and spiritual decline of the Northern Kingdom. The miracle, uh, snake, the miracle, um, there are some miracles that they perform um, and compare those with those of Moses. So um, Jesus and John the Baptist. So let me just see. Jesus and John the Baptist. Um, and I love this foreshadowing. Uh, the transition of John the Baptist to Jesus is the same setting where Elijah's ministry passed to Elisha. And Elisha's miracles foreshadow those of Jesus raising the child from the dead, multiplication of loaves, and the healing of a leper. So if John the Baptist is the new Elijah, then Jesus is the greater, is new and greater Elisha. So that was interesting. Okay, so let's move now. Um... Okay, so Jeff Cavins inserts this amazing table with the kings that we've talked that we're going to talk about here and over the northern kingdom. Um, and it gives the king of Israel the date he, they reigned and their relationship to the predecessor um, and the end of the reign and the scripture reference. So this just looks so it looks like a great tool for re quick references when you want to find something or whatever. So, okay, um, here's where we ended. The sixth period with the sin of jealousy that has raised its ugly head. Remember, God was angry with Solomon for worshiping other gods, and he was going to give Solomon servant Jeroboam, the ten tribes. Um, well, Jeroboam, just so you know, is still part of the twelve tribes. He's one of the children I don't know if it's I can't remember which tribe but uh even though he is a servant he's a forced labor but he's still part of Joseph's family okay so the death of Solomon um and now Solomon dies and this is very interesting the rest of the acts of Solomon and all he did and his wisdom are not written uh, are they not written in the Acts of Solomon? Now, this got my curiosity up, so I took a quick look and found out that this is referencing a lost text called the Acts of Solomon. And I'm going to look into that uh, more. It's very interesting. And I wonder if the text that has been lost, if it would have been 74 books to the Bible, right? Like, wow. So, okay, so Kings 12. The northern tribes secede meaning withdrawal. Okay, so a little reminder and recap of where we were. Remember Jeroboam, uh, he was a skilled worker, and Solomon put him in charge of the forced labor of the tribes of Joseph, um, even though he was part of the, those tribes in the first book of Kings 11. I mistakenly called them slaves, but they were not. They're just like Jeroboam. They were actually the tribe of Joseph. He's from Ephraim. He's one of the descendants. So anyway, even though he's called a servant, he's the one that God sent um, the prophet to one day. And the prophet, uh, Ahijah, came to Jeroboam with a prophecy. And the prophet tore a new cloak in 12 pieces. And he said, take 10 pieces for yourself. This is what the Lord God of Israel says. See, I'm going to tear the kingdom of, out of Solomon's hand and give you 10 tribes because the idol worship of the Israelites caused God to divide the kingdom. But the house of David would retain a remnant of the kingdom, including Jerusalem, because of God's covenant with David. So I found all that interesting. Okay, so Rehoboam, Solomon's son, is going to made, be made king upon his father's death. So when Rehoboam heard, um, when Jeroboam heard that, that was the servant that he was supposed to get part of the, you know, David's kingdom, or uh, Solomon's kingdom, when he heard that Solomon was dead, or he, the one who had been planning his demise, um, so he couldn't get to Solomon's kingdom. So now that he's dead, Jeroboam can return to Israel and make a claim. So Jeroboam and all the assembly of Israel 
um, what relief from those heavy taxes that Solomon put on them to pay for all his fancy building. And he says, give me three days, and he takes it under advisement. So he goes um, back to them. Let's see. Okay, so I want it to come over here. So um, Rehoboam gets two conflicting pieces of advice. He asks his experienced older advisors on whom his father depended for their advice. He also asks the younger inexperienced men to tell him what to do. The younger men, impatient and arrogant and immature, I'd say, they seem to want to stay in power and boss everyone around, like his dad Solomon. Rehoboam does not choose wisely in this case. He follows the advice of the younger men and tries to increase his own power instead of thinking of what's best for his people. Being older doesn't necessarily mean being wiser, but neither does being younger. When someone gives you uh, advice, consider it carefully. A wise person doesn't think about his or her own needs first. A wise person thinks about what is best for everyone. What impact will your choices have on others? So I thought that was good, especially for kids. Um, so he goes back to, the, to them and says, my little finger is thicker than, okay, so he stood, let me just put, go here. Okay, so the people come and say, we want relief from these heavy taxes. And he says, okay, well, give me three days. And King Barrett, well, he took the counsel of the older men who stood before his father. Then he took the counsel of the younger ones. And so he they come back in three days and he, and he says to them, my little finger is thicker than my father's loins. My father's chest, uh, what does that say? My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So, wow, how about that language? Um, so he became cruel in his new power. Um, now, do you notice there's always a lot of delays with when people are holding something back, they delay? Well, he tells them to go for three more days. So the king did not listen to the people, ultimately. It was... Um, uh, for it was a turn of affairs brought about by the Lord that he might fulfill his word, which the Lord spoke by... Elijah, Elijah, Ahijah, Ahijah, the prophet to Jeroboam, okay, so the prophet to his father, um, the key event, the kingdom, wait a minute, okay, so the kingdom divides up here, David and Solomon, and when, when, when he dies, that's what happens, okay, so, um, Yeah, and when they when they die, it says they slept with their fathers. Okay. So, all right. So, um, Jeroboam reigns over Israel. So when the king did not listen, the people answered the king, "What portion have we and David?" Um, they're like, "Well, what do we have to do with it?" You know. So, um, Jeroboam reigns. Um, he reigned over the cities of Judah. Um, King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who is taskmaster, master over the forced labor. And all Israel stoned him to death. So that's how much they respect um, Rehoboam, you know, because he already told them, look, I'm going to make things harder for you. So, of course, they're going to do that. But he's too young to, rec to realize that. Um, so King Rehoboam made haste to flee to Jerusalem. Um, so Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day, it says. Um, and when Israel, her, uh, when Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned, they called an assembly and made him king over all of Israel. So then there was only one tribe following the house of David the tribe of Judah only, which we know Jesus comes out of. So, 
that's interesting to think about. Jeroboam came to Jerusalem and assembled all the house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 chosen warriors to fight against the house of Israel. So now these, tri these two, uh, north and south, are going to start fighting against each other um, to restore the kingdom to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of God came to the prophet Shemaiah, a man of God, who said, Thus says the Lord, for what has happened is my will. You shall not fight against your kinsmen, um, the sons of Israel. For what has happened is my will and is from me. So they listened and they went home according to the word of the Lord. So I found that interesting. Jeroboam's golden calves. So Jeroboam didn't want people from his new kingdom to go and worship God over in Jerusalem because then... That was uh, where uh, Rehoboam, the king of Judah, ruled. So King Jeroboam made two calves of gold and told the people um, that was where they would worship. And he appointed priests. Um, and he appointed, uh, and the priests were not Levites. And that's important, you know. Um, those are are the are God's priests and he appointed days of feasts and he offered sacrifices and burned incense all of this is evil in the eyes of the Lord so he sent a prophet okay um a man from Judah which came out you know Jesus comes out of just a reminder again um and a man of God from Judah, by the word of the Lord, came to Bethel. Jeroboam was standing at the altar burning incense, and the man yelled out, O altar, O altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, a son shall be born to the house of David named Josiah, and he shall slaughter your priests, serving at pagan altars, and he will burn human bones on you. And the man yelled again, this altar will fall apart and the ashes will be scattered. Then you will know the Lord has spoken through me. So that was dramatic. Um, Jeroboam stretched out his hand and while saying, seize that man. And at once the king became paralyzed. Now I will tell you, um, I like I said, this is my aid. So... What, ha what I found in this particular book um, that it was much harder to uh, follow. Um, the language made it a little more difficult in this one. So I used breakthrough a lot in this one. So it won't always say everything here, but is all the same stuff. So, okay. So the altar suddenly fell, the ashes spilled to the ground, and the prophet predicted the name of the Lord. So King, I have to go a little quicker. So King Jeroboam cried out to the man, please pray for me, the Lord, your God, and ask him to heal my arm. So the prophet prayed to the Lord and the King's arm was healed instantaneously. Then the King said, come home with me, have something to eat. I will reward you for what you have done. The prophet answered, even if you gave me half of your wealth, uh, I would not go with you or eat or drink with you. Um, the Lord commanded me not to eat or drink a thing and to return home, not the same way I came. So he left by another road. So, um, we're still down here. Um, and at that time there was an old prophet and living in Bethel and his sons came and told him what the prophet from Judah had done. So the old prophet went to look for the prophet from Judah and he found him and he said, come home and have a meal with me. But the prophet said, I can't because the Lord has commanded me uh, not to eat at Bethel. And he said, uh, well, I'm a prophet just like you. And an angel told me to take you home with me. But the old prophet was lying. So the prophet from Judah believed him and went home with the old prophet and had a meal. And as they were sitting at the table, um, the word of the Lord came out of the old prophet and he cried to the prophet from Judah, thus says the Lord, you disobeyed me and didn't 
do what I commanded. Because of this, you will be killed and your body will not be buried in your family grave. Pretty dramatic, right? And then it says, okay, so then jo Ju Judah left. And I'm thinking, I would be like freaking out. But anyway, Judah left to go home and a lion found him and killed him. Um, and, and so the old prophet found this out and told his sons to get the body and buried it in his family grave and told them he wanted to be buried next to the prophet of Judah because he knew the Lord's command against the altar in Bethel would come true. So that was like, wow. Um, okay. So let's go to the next page. Um, you know, may, meanwhile, Jeroboam did not turn from his evil ways, but this told me, um, yes, the prophet was deceived, but we never know why the Lord is instructing us to do something. And when we don't listen, we pay the cost. I know that from personal experience. My brother had a stroke in another state and I had to drive my mother to be by his side because they told us he was going to die. So I was driving her, him, her from Florida to Pennsylvania and it was about three in the morning and I was speeding to get her there to get her there before he died. And something kept telling me, you need to slow down. You need to slow down. And I was arguing with myself in my head that now to me is always a clue to me when something is opposite of what I want to do and it comes suddenly and I'm arguing with myself. I know it's from the Lord or my poor part guardian angel. Oh. Um, because of that, um, and several other instances after that, I found that out. But unfortunately, at the time, I didn't know that that night. And I continued to speed over 100 miles an hour, I am ashamed to say, um, because I was so afraid we wouldn't get there before my brother died and my mother would be heartbroken. But my angel, or the Lord, was telling me to slow down and I wouldn't listen. So I ended up with a $300 out-of-state ticket. Um, but the good news is my brother did live and I did get my mother to him by like 5 a.m., it just cost me quite a pretty penny. So, um, judgment on the house of Jeroboam. Abij okay. Abijah, Jer Jeroboam's son, fell sick. And he told his wife to disguise herself and go to Jerusalem and ask the prophet that told him he would be king what will happen to their son. When she got there, the prophet told her he knew who she was and um, to tell Jeroboam, the Lord said, I chose you to make you a ruler of my people of Israel. I took the kingdom away from David's descendants and gave it to you. But you have not been like my servant, David, who is completely loyal to me and obeyed my commands and did only what I approve and did only what I approved of. You have rejected me and aroused my anger by making idols to worship. Because of this, I will bring disaster to your dynasty, and I will kill all your male descendants, young and old. Dogs and vultures will eat your family, and they will be slept, swept away like dung. I notice dung, is, it's the same as poo. Um, it's, used a, it's used a lot from back then, so apparently that was a popular word. <laughs> um, and he went on to say, the Lord will punish Israel, and... Uh, she will shake like a reed shaking in a stream. And I will remove the people of Israel from this good land, which I gave to their ancestors, and will scatter them beyond the Euphrates River, because you have aroused, they have aroused the Lord's anger by making idols of the goddess Asherah. And the Lord will abandon Israel because of Jeroboam's sins. And, lead, and led the people of Israel into sin. So the wife went back and her son died. So um, the death of Jeroboam. So it goes on about burying the child, Jeroboam's child. And then it says the rest of the acts of Jeroboam are written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Israel. And then it says Jeroboam reigned 22 years and that he went to sleep with his fathers. Um, and Nedab, his son, reigned afterwards. Um, so I noticed the punishment from God doesn't always come immediately. Interesting, because that 
kind of is how it happens in real life too. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, so Rehoboam reigns over Judah. Rehoboam reigned 17 years in Jerusalem and Judah did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. They provoked him to jealousy and anger more than their fathers. They built high places with other gods, and they made male cult prostitutes in the land an abomination to the Lord that have been driven out before them. So in the fifth year of King Rehoboam, the king of Egypt came and took all the treasures that had been collected by David and Solomon. He took everything. So, um, let's see. Okay. Everything else King Rehoboam did is in the history of the kings of the Judah Chronicles. That's interesting. I always worried about the Chronicles and what they were about. Now I know what they're about. So that was interesting. And then it says Rehoboam died and his son Abijam uh, succeeded him as king. So now we have new rulers, their, their sons, right? Um, so Abijam rules, reigns over Judah, and he reigned for three years. He was just like his father. He did not walk with the Lord. He continued to war with Jeroboam, and it says it's all in the book of Chronicles, and then Abijam died, and his son Asa succeeded him as king. Okay, sorry, I've got to adjust here. Okay, so... Um, Asa rules over Judah. Hold on. Um, and in the 20th year, King Jeroboam of Israel, Asa becomes king of Judah, and he ruled 41 years in Jerusalem. Now, Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He did differently than his father, I guess. He put away the male cult prostitutes out of their land and removed all the idols that his father had made. And he also removed his mother from being queen mother. Wow. Because she had an abominable image made for Asherah and Asa cut down her image and burned it at the brook of Kidron. So that was interesting. Pretty dramatic. Okay, so um, now some of the now some of the high places were not taken down, but the heart of Asa was holy and true to the Lord all of his days. So that was good. Um, the war between Asa and Basha. So there's a lot of fighting going on here. I'm not going to go blow by blow, but it's supposedly all written in the book of Chronicles. It wasn't that interesting, you know, some, it was a little dramatic. Um, it does say that when Asa is in his old age, um, he has, he's diseased in his feet. So uh, I'm guessing he had diabetes. So it's always interesting to hear these medical things that they didn't know back then. Um, uh, I don't know why, but maybe it was because I was a nurse. But anyway, he died and Josephat, his son, then reigned. Okay, so Nadab reigns over Israel, though. So now Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, reigns over Israel. The second year of Asa, king of Judah, he reigned for two years. What he did was evil in the sight of the Lord like his father. So I have to say, it gets confusing with all these names, but it gets cleared up as one goes on longer. These first few are, you know, they're not here that long, so it's a little more confusing. But anyway, and the son Basha, um, uh, the son of Ahijah, Ahija, killed Nadab, the third year of Asa, and he became king. As as soon as he was king, he killed all the house of Jeroboam. So that was interesting right there. Okay, so I'm supposed to end here and start the new one. So we're ending at 15.